prayer for Wednesday begins on page 401 in your prayer book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The opening canticle, the song of God's grace. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we shall be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us to be your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Two psalms appointed for today, Psalms 110 and 111, if you turn to page 342 in your prayer book. Page 342, Psalms 110 and 111. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord commits to you the scepter of your power. Reign from Zion in the midst of your enemies. Noble are you from the day of your birth upon the holy hill. Radiant are you even from the womb in the morning dew of your youth. The Lord has sworn and will not turn back. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The king shall stand at your right hand, O Lord, and shatter kings in the day of his wrath. Glorious in majesty, he shall judge among the nations and shatter heads over a wide land. He shall slake his thirst from the brook beside the way. Therefore shall he lift up his head O oh, praise the Lord, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright and among the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, and studied by all who take delight in them. His deeds are majestic and glorious, and his righteousness stands forever. His marvellous acts have won him a name to be remembered, the Lord is gracious and merciful. He gives food to those that fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He showed his people the power of his acts in giving them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are faithful and just, and all his commands are sure. They stand firm forever and ever. They are done in faithfulness and in truth. He sent redemption to his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy is his name and worthy to be feared. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and of good understanding are those that keep his commandments. His praise shall endure forever. We consecrate this day to your service, O Lord. May all our thoughts, words, and actions be well-pleasing to you and serve the good of our brothers and sisters through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning's first reading is from the second book of Chronicles, chapter 29, 
beginning to read at verse 31 through to chapter 30, verse 12. Then Hezekiah said, You have now consecrated yourselves to the Lord. Come near, bring sacrifices and thank offerings to the house of the Lord. The assembly brought sacrifices and thank offerings, and all who were of a willing heart but brought burnt offerings. The number of the burnt offerings that the assembly brought was 70 bulls, 100 rams, and 200 lambs. All these were burnt for the Lord. The consecrated offerings were 600 bulls and 3,000 sheep. But the priests were too few and could not skin all the burnt offerings. So until other priests had sanctified themselves, their kindred, the Levites, helped them until the work was finished. For the Levites were more conscientious than the priests in sanctifying themselves. Besides the great number of burnt offerings, there was the fat of the offerings of well-being, and there were the drink offerings for the burnt offerings. Thus the service of the house of the Lord was restored, and Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced because of what God had done for the people, for the thing had come about suddenly. Hezekiah sent word to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, and they that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. For the king and his, his officials and all the assembly in Jerusalem had taken counsel to keep the Passover in the second month, for they could, could not keep it at its proper time because the priests had not sanctified themselves in sufficient number, nor had the people assembled in Jerusalem. The plan seemed right to the king and all the assembly, so they decreed to make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that the people should come and keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel, at Jerusalem, for they had not kept it in great numbers as prescribed. So couriers went throughout all Israel and Judah with letters from the king and his officials, as the king had commanded, saying, O people of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, so that he may turn again to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. Do not be like your ancestors and your kindred, who were faithless to the Lord God of their ancestors, so that he made them a desolation, as you see. Do not now be stiff-necked as your ancestors were, but yield yourselves to the Lord and come to his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, so that his fierce anger may turn away from you. For as you return to the Lord, your kindred and your children will find compassion with their captors and return to the land, for the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. So the couriers went from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as Zebulun. But they laughed at them to scorn and mocked them. Only a few from Asher, Manasseh and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart to do what the king and the officials commanded by the word of the Lord. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The second reading is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 1 to 20. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. And hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. and They spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. He entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly, 
and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. When some stubbornly refused to believe and spoke evil of the way before the congregation, he left them, taking the disciples with him, and argued daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years, so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary, extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that when the hand handkerchiefs or aprons that he had touched were brought to the sick, their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some itinerant Jewish exorcists tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the, G by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. But the evil spirits said to them in reply, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leapt on them, mastered them all, and so overpowered them that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. When this became known to all residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, everyone was awestruck, and the name of the Lord Jesus was praised. Also, many of those who became believers confessed and disclosed their practices. A number of those who practiced magic collected their books and burned them publicly. When the value of these books was calculated, it was found to come to 50,000 silver coins. So the word of the Lord grew mighty and prevailed. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Now the canticle, the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty and bounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father, you took our flesh to set us free. You humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for this day. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always thankfully receive the benefits of this sacrifice and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. So we pray today that the Church, through its leaders and through all its members, may bring the faithful to a deeper knowledge and a deeper love of God, in this we pray for our own parish here in Rosebud and McRae, 
for all the people in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that our homes may be places of God's presence, where everyone is taught to care and respect one another, to hold each other in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may learn to understand and to accept those people who differ from us in beliefs, race or background, that our hearts may be open and accepting of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we have been asked today to offer prayers for the Diocese of Ballarat, for Bishop Gary Wetherill, and for all the clergy and all the people of that diocese. We pray also for the Anglican Criminal Justice Ministry Chaplaincy, for the senior chaplain, Rob Ferguson and all chaplains that work in that area. We pray for St Matthew's Endeavour Hills, for their priest Kim Wellard, for all the people of that parish. And we pray too for the Metropolitan Meeting that will take place today with Archbishop Freya. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church family, for all our members, for all connected with this family at All Saints and St. Catherine. We hold in our thoughts and prayers, particularly on this day, Joy Ashley, David and Mickey Ashton, praying particularly for Mickey, recovering from major surgery. We pray for Ken and Ingrid Austin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that we may with one voice glorify our God and Father. Amen.